whenever we talked about tray flips and how to use a front fit, we have been saying different things. Front fit is just a guide. Click lightly, not so too hard. In the back fit. Front fit does not it's flip. Like Learn to kickflip kick first. Front fit leaves you the board. You do have to flip. Scoop as hard as possible. Combine a kickflip and a 360 pop shove it. Okay, so, what is it? What does it really do? Because of the complexity of the flip, even if I try to show you what my front fit really does, not only was it hard to show you what was actually taking place, it was just not convincing, was it? So let's just drastically change the condition and see what happens. If this flips, I might be able to give you a different perspective that you didn't have before. Today we are throwing a demonstration experiment, and you are watching why the trick. Throughout the previous episodes, I've been saying my front fit does not cause the flip in my tray flips. Instead, the board flips due to the spring of my rear track. And although I could use my front fit to flip my board, not only do I find it feasible, but in fact easier to cause the flip without using my front fit by being able to focus only on the movement of my back fit. Now I'm not saying either one of these ways is better than the other one, and whether to use your front fit or not comes down to your preference and set up your board. So, I'll just be talking about how it is possible to trade flip for me without using my front fit, and so that I can double make sure that my front fit is not causing the flip, I'm just removing this part. So, I started drilling holes, and with this saw, I think I can cut my board like a knife through butter. Or not. Let's just switch to this handsaw. Who needs a skateboard to be so incredibly hard anyway? And there we go. After grueling hours of drilling and sawing, it just came off. I just feel sorry for almost skateboards for wasting their products like this. Anyway, there's no way I can flick it anymore. Even if my front foot tries to flick it by any chance, there's no place to flick in the first place. Moment of truth. I admit, I needed some practice. It was really uncomfortable, unstable, and uncontrollable. But soon enough, I started getting a hang of it. Then, this happened. As you can see, the tip of my toe can possibly not flick my board anymore. Nonetheless, it seems like it flips without any problem. Without any place to flip, my front foot can possibly not be causing the flip. So I think it's safe to say, this just proves that my front fit does not cause the flip in my tray flips. Instead, it is highly, highly possible that it is my back fit that plays the role. And as for the back fit, even when I intentionally use my front fit forward to cause the flip, my back fit does the same thing anyways. It scoops the tail in a way that I can pinch down the rear track. By doing this, you can let the rear track store energy to go back to its original state, which, when released, causes the flip. If you'd like to know more about this concept, please go check out How Do Tray Flips Really Work? Link in description. With that said, does that mean the front fit does nothing? In fact, it does play an important role. Without the front fit holding down the board, the board shall start tilting over as soon as we touch the tail. In order for the back fit to be able to pinch down the rear track deep enough, the front fit has to hold the movement of the board before the back fit completes the scooping motion. Think about it. If you push down the tail like this, the board flips over before it has any chance to pinch down the rear track, right? So try considering the front fit as a sort of counterweight. Finally, let's summarize how to do it accordingly. Number one, as I crouch down, I put most of my weight on my front foot. While my head and weight being over my front foot, I can hold on my board effectively. And what's more important, I can release the pressure at the same time as I jump. 
number two, and then I start jumping up. Meanwhile, my front foot keeps on holding down the wall. And number three, when my body has momentum to go up, I finally scoop. And by this time, my front foot practically is not in touch with my board anymore. If you want, you could also add some style to it by extending your front foot. Just lastly, I just want to talk about how it feels to me. When I tray flip, I really don't pay even the slightest attention to whatever my front foot does. When I jump up, the center of mass of my body brings my front foot with it, so I can release the pressure of my front foot without even thinking about lifting it. Something to think about. And that's all for this episode. Please leave a comment, subscribe, like this video if you want to. Thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.